May grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God, the Father, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Word of God, which is the basis of this sermon this morning, is found in the Old Testament, book of Ezekiel. I call your attention to Ezekiel chapter 34. We will read verses 11 and 12 as the sermon text, where we read as follows God's word. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. So far, the text. In the name of Jesus, who came to seek and to save that which was lost. Your fellow redeemed sinners, creatures, the one true only living, creating, and preserving triune God. Good Shepherd Sunday. Jesus called himself Good Shepherd. Well, a shepherd is not a shepherd until he has sheep. It takes sheep to be a shepherd. So let's talk about the sheep first, then we'll talk about the shepherd. Sheep, well, sheep tend to wander. Sheep have this innate desire to stray. If they're not constantly watching their shepherd, not constantly hearing their shepherd's voice, they quickly forget where they're at and they start wandering off. Think, well, there's greener grass over there. And so they begin to stray and they wander. And they like to wander away from the flock. So they wander off by themselves. And very quickly they get lost. And the more they get lost, the more they wander and got lost some more. They wander into places where there's no grass to eat anymore. There's no more water. They leave the green pastures and still waters that their shepherd had brought them to. And now they're in trouble. So they now have to contend not only with starvation, they have to contend with wild animals like lions who can devour them very quickly. They have no defense. And then night comes. Now it's dark. And you know, darkness is when the robbers come to rob the sheep, to steal the sheep. They pretend to be shepherds. They pretend to be kind to the sheep, to lead them away, steal them. And now the sheep are in big trouble. They don't know where they're at. They're in the hands of robbers. They're susceptible to wild animals. They don't know where to find food and water. They're scared. And they want their shepherd. And they desperately want to get back to the flock. But they don't know how. They can't do it. They're lost. And as they wander around trying to get back to their shepherd, they get further lost. The more they try to save themselves, the further lost they get. The Bible says, all we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned, each one, to his own way. That's not in Ezekiel, that's in Isaiah. 
It's all through the Bible. We are sheep. And sheep tend to stray. Now this is especially true of unbelievers. They're straying all the time. People who don't believe the Bible. People who don't believe in the triune God. People who don't believe in Jesus Christ as God the Son. Their only Savior from sin, death, and hell. They're always lost. They're always straying. They're deeply lost and in big trouble. But it's also true many times of us who do believe. Because you see, the shepherd's not always visible to us. We don't always see Jesus. We go out into the world we don't see Jesus standing next to us. Oh, he says he's always with us. But because we can't see him with our eyes, we think maybe he's not there. And we're not constantly reading the Bible or in church or Bible class. We're out there in the world, not always hearing the voice of our shepherd. And then we tend to stray. That's what the, uh, the theme is today. We, like sheep, have gone astray. It is our nature. We're sheep. That's how God looks at us. As a shepherd looks at his flock of sheep. And we tend to stray from our shepherd. We tend to neglect his word. We don't want to go to church Sunday morning. Why, there's lots of other things to do. Rather than go hear the voice of our good shepherd. During the week, we're so busy. Why, it's easy to neglect his word. It's easy to neglect prayer, Bible study. And we're around all the unbelievers and they're engaged in all kinds of sin, and we think, well, maybe we could tamper with that a little bit too. That's our nature as sheep. We tend to stray. Or as the Bible says, we tend to forsake the gathering together of the brethren. We tend to get away from the flock. And so we wander into the desert where there's no food or water for our soul. And now we're in trouble. Now we're in constant danger from the wild animals, the lions, who will quickly devour us. The Bible puts it this way, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The lions of the devil and his evil angels. A lot of people uh, say, there's no devil. You mean, that, you mean that guy in the red suit with the pitchfork? Uh, you mean the guy with the uh, pointed tail? <laughs> you don't really believe that, do you? So say the unbelievers. God says he is real, and he is powerful, much more powerful than you, like a lion to a sheep. And you cannot defeat him on your own. He will quickly devour you without your shepherd being near. Many sheep are straying and being devoured by him every day. And then nighttime falls. And in the darkness, the robbers come for us. The spiritual robbers to steal God's flock. Who are the spiritual robbers who work in the dark? They're all the false prophets. All those people out there who claim to know God and speak for God and tell you about God, and they're going to tell you how to get to heaven, and they're going to tell you the truth. All the false prophets. Jesus said, beware of false prophets. They work under the darkness of lies. 
untruths, deceit. And they do it very cleverly. They're very good at lying. Clever speech. They have entertainment. They'll entertain you. And that will disguise as a worship service. They'll tell you they're preaching God's word. They'll tell you they're preaching God's word in its all, all of its truth and purity. But when you really examine what they're teaching and what they're preaching, and you compare it with the Bible, you see they're very subtly and cleverly changing it. They may start with a Bible verse and they change it a little bit. Change this little word, or leave that word out, or add that word. And they say, well, we're just keeping up with the times. You know, this is the 21st century. And yet the Bible never changes. God never changes. And his word never changes. Never changes. If you're going to a church that changes its message, get out of it as fast as you can. You're being robbed. The true church never changes. The true church never changes its message. It sticks strictly to the Bible. All of it. Doesn't add to it. Doesn't detract from it. Doesn't change it in any way. What you need to hear as a sheep in God's flock is the voice of your good shepherd, period. Not what some man thinks. Not so, what some man feels. Not some, as the Bible says, craftily devised fables. Falsehoods. The Bible says, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And so our text talks about sheep that have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. All of the darkness of deceit, the lies, the cloudiness. The Bible's clear. It's not cloudy. If you don't know what the Bible's saying, you're being deceived. A lot of churches say, well, you know, you can interpret it this way, or you can interpret it that way. We really don't know what it says. Baloney. That's flim-flam. The Bible is a light to guide our way in the dark. Not a shadow or a cloud. The Bible is clear if it's taken as it reads. Another thing that sheep like to do in their nature as sheep, they like to follow the other sheep. They see one sheep wandering off a little bit, and they might think, hmm, I wonder where he's going. Let's follow him. And so they turn other sheep into their shepherds. And so whole groups of them may wander off. Then they all get lost, following other sheep. We call this following the crowd, group think. Conforming to the world, the Bible calls it. Well, everybody else is doing it. I guess it's okay. They must know something I don't know. I'll do what they do. I'll act like them. I'll follow these other sheep instead of the shepherd. So many people get their ideas, their philosophies, their thoughts, their opinions from their unbelieving neighbors. 
the people they work with who are unbelievers. And they think, yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe he's right. Or they get it off of TV or movies or books or newspapers or magazines. Following the sheep. The Bible says, for ye were as sheep going astray. When sheep stray, they can't find their way back. They're lost. They can't find their way back to their shepherd. They're helpless. So how can lost sinners find their way to God? Sheep, when they get lost... They think they can find their way back. They try. They keep moving. But they move farther and farther away instead of closer to the shepherd. So it is with human beings. When we're lost in sin, we think we can save ourselves by our own efforts. I've talked to thousands of people and asked them the question, if you were to die tonight and stand before God and he were to say, why should I let you into my heaven, what would you say? And I'm telling you, 95% of them say, I'd tell God I was good. I've lived a good life. I've done the best I can. Stuff like that. About 5% of them say, I would tell God Jesus is my Savior and died for my sins. The other 95% think they can find their way to God themselves with their own good works. They've lived a good life, they think. They confess no sins, and they never mention the name of Jesus. They're like straying sheep who think they can find their way back to the sheepfold themselves. They can't. Only the shepherd can save the sheep. The shepherd has to seek out the lost sheep and find that lost sheep and bring it back to the flock. And the shepherd for us is only God himself. As he says here in Ezekiel, For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, meaning only I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd, Seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them. Only God can save us. We can't save ourselves. In and of ourselves, we are lost sheep. Only the shepherd can save us. And how did our good shepherd save us? Well, as Jesus said in our gospel lesson a moment ago, I was sent down from heaven by my Father. God the Father sent God the Son to this world of sinners. All scattered sheep to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why he came. That's why God the Son became a man. The man that we know as Jesus of Nazareth. The Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Promised all through the Old Testament. In the fullness of time, he became incarnate so that he could die. Because the wages of our sin is death. And he came to collect our wages. He came to die in our place. And that's how the sheep are saved. Let's say for a moment that this book is not the Bible. Let's say that this book is your life. 
Every page is another day in your life, and every day you're writing another page has all of your thoughts, all of your words, all of your actions for every day of your life in it. This is your life. Does it have sins in it? Does it have disobedience to God's commands in it? it certainly does. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How many times do you sin every day? Are you less than perfect? Psychiatrists say that we think about 10,000 thoughts a day. How many of them are perfect? Let's say that only three times did you sin in a day. Why'd you, you'd be almost a walking angel. All of the other thousands of thoughts and words and deeds are perfect in God's eyes, but only three. So every page you only have three sins. But multiply that times a year. That's over a thousand a year. Multiply that times your age. This book that you're writing. What do you have, 40,000, 50, 60,000 sins in your book? What chance would you stand in a human court having broken the law 50,000 times? So there's your life. Here's you. And there's your life. And you want to stand before God and say, God, you should let me into heaven because of this? can't get to heaven with this. This is like a huge weight weighing you down, sinking you down to eternal damnation and hell. Not heaven. But God the Father sent God the Son from heaven down to this world to become a man just like you with one difference. He had no sin. He had no book of sin. But on the cross of Calvary, this is what happened. The Bible says, The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And he sank under the load of your sin. He paid hell. He was forsaken of God in your place. Now, you're free of that weight of sin, free to rise into heaven. But you'll notice this hand didn't do a thing. This lost sheep couldn't do a thing. It was all done by God, the good shepherd. He sought you out, his lost, scattered sheep. And he took all of your sins upon himself and became a lamb slain on the altar of the cross. Your sacrifice, your payment for all your sins. Is this true? Verily, verily, I say unto you, He rose from the dead. There's your proof. Jesus was always asked, Give us a sign, give us a sign, give us a miracle, give us a wonder. He says, You have one sign that this is all true the sign of the prophet Jonah. As he was in the belly of the whale for three days and came forth, so will I be in the belly of the earth and on the third day come forth. There's your proof. There's your sign. You want proof? He rose from the dead. He gave his life, the good shepherd did for the sheep, and rose again. The Apostle Paul was asked, What must I do to be saved? The Apostle Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about a dead faith, a head knowledge of the Bible. A living faith. Not just in your brain, but in your soul. That makes you, first in your life, a follower of the Good Shepherd. 
a sheep of his flock. You follow him every day, every moment. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not first a plumber, first a farmer, first a homemaker, first a student, first an office worker, but first a follower of the good shepherd. That's a living faith, a saving faith. That brings a person into God's flock out of the wilderness. But even this faith, even this believing, is not our doing. Something we create by our decision. Because the sheep can't save themselves. Only the shepherd can save the sheep. He seeks us out, and the Holy Ghost working through his word, working through baptism. He creates this faith in us, this living, saving faith in Christ our Savior. It's not our doing. It's not our decision. We don't create it, and we don't sustain it. The Bible says that we who believe, quote, believe according to the working of His mighty power, unquote. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out, and will deliver them. He gets all the glory. God gets all the credit, all the thanks, all the praise. It's by grace, His grace, His mercy that we are saved, and that not of ourselves. The Bible says of God that He should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered. How does God seek us out? By what means? By his word. By his voice. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The Holy Scriptures are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. One other thing. Some people wonder why pastors in our church wear robes. Well, it's to remind them that their pastor is their shepherd. Kind of look like a shepherd's robe. But really, that's not true. Pastors are not shepherds. They are under-shepherds. Your real shepherd is Jesus Christ. Some churches, when their pastor departs, or whatever reason, the church is just going to a tizzy. Like, how, how can we go on? I mean, we have no pastor. Oh, yes, they do. Their pastor never leaves them. Their pastor is Jesus. And he says, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Even just two or three of you gathered together. I am there. Your pastor, your real shepherd, never leaves you. In the Bible, we read about the Bereans. The Apostle Paul went to the town of Berea, and he went into the synagogue and began to tell them that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of all the Old Testament. That the Messiah has come. But you know, these Bereans, they said, well, hold on a minute. Uh, before we listen to you, let's get our Bibles out. 
And let's make sure everything you say is here in the Bible clearly. And the Bible says these Bereans were called noble because they knew who their real shepherd was. It's God, not some human being. It's God. And they would only listen to the voice of their shepherd, God, through God's word. So, when a church gets away from the Bible, that's when the sheep scatter. Not when their pastor may die or retire or go to some other church or whatever. A church strays, the sheep stray, when they get away from their good shepherd, God, who leads them through his voice, the Bible. When you get away from the Bible, that's when the lions come in, and that's when the robbers come in. The Bible says, when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice, and a stranger will they not follow but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of man's understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.